Okay, so let me start off with what is PyTechPlot. Uh, PyTechPlot is a Python API to TechPlot360. Uh, it's a separate module uh, that you install using your installation of Python. Uh, we support Python 2.7 and 3.4 and newer. Uh, you can do a simple installation using the pip command. So if you're familiar with installing other Python modules, it's really quite straightforward. Uh, it does require an installation of TechPlot360. So this Python module, PyTechPlot, is dependent on TechPlot360 being installed. And it does also require that uh, you have active maintenance with us through a TechPlus support contract. Uh, documentation is available in the TechPlot360 installation, as well as online. So what can PyTechPlot do? Well, really anything that TechPlot360 can do, uh, and more. Uh, the and more really comes in its ability to access data directly, which Devin will give a, a good demonstration of today. Uh, you can automate image and movie creation like you can with uh, the TechPlot macros, but uh, Python being a much more flexible language than our macro language, we really view this as being the next generation of scripting for TechPlot360. Uh, and it also allows you to interface with other Python modules. Uh, if you're using Python in uh, current workflows, uh, you'll now more easily be able to incorporate TechPlot 360 capability into those workflows. So uh, the first new capability that we're going to talk about today in, uh, the, in PyTechPlot is the ability to record directly from the TechPlot 360 user interface. Uh, those of you who are familiar with the TechPlot 360 macro language, uh, it works very, very similarly. Uh, you just go to the scripting menu, and say record PyTechPlot. And we felt that this was a very, very important uh, capability to give you because we know that getting started with a new API can be challenging. Uh, so the ability to record Python scripts directly give you a real quick start into understanding the API. Uh, so uh, the code that I'm showing here is uh, an actual recorded PyTechPlot script. Uh, in this case, I just wanted to know how do I turn on the mesh and how do I change the mesh color to blue on my wing surface here? Uh, and then finally, how do I export uh, this to an image file? And uh, just by recording and taking those steps in the TechPlot 360 user interface, I was able to generate that. And again, that gives me a very quick start. So the next capability uh, that we'll be demonstrating uh, today, Devin's going to be demonstrating, is PyTechPlot Connections. So this uh, allows you to actually control the TechPlot360 user interface directly from Python. Uh, in our previous release, you could only use the PyTechPlot API in batch mode, uh, which is useful, uh, but this uh, connect capability now adds even more utility. So there are two prerequisites here. Uh, number one, you have to instruct TechPlot360 to listen for incoming connections from Python. And that's done, again, through the scripting menu uh, the PyTechPlot connections dialog uh, has the ability to accept connections. Uh, you see also there's a port number there. We communicate through uh, sockets and you can uh, define which port to use. Uh, there's more information on that in our documentation. Uh, the second thing is you have to add uh, one line to your Python scripts called techplot.session.connect. And this instructs your Python uh, script to connect to TechPlot360 itself and control the actual user interface. On the next slide, uh, we'll show you how to do this. So we'll just play this video here. So first what I'm doing is I'm going to modify one of the example scripts that comes with TechPlot360 2017 R3 and we'll add that one line, techplot.session.connect. And by default, this will connect over port 7600. Uh, you can define which port uh, if, if you want. Then we'll go into TechPlot360 itself, tell TechPlot360 to accept the connections, and then we'll just run this script. So that's all the modification we have to do to get it to control the TechPlot360 user interface. This is going to load a, uh, the Onera wing data set that comes with TechPlot360, set up some ISA surfaces. Uh, the nice thing here is it leaves you in a state where you can continue to interact with TechPlot360. Now, another uh, way that you can interact with TechPlot360 is directly through the Python console. So here I'm importing TechPlot, and then we'll say uh, tp.sessionconnect, that's TechPlot session connect, and now we're connected to TechPlot360. And on that recording slide, we showed how to activate the mesh, so that's what we're going to be doing here. Show mesh equals true. 
And then on this next line, we'll uh, call the command to change that mesh color to blue. So what we're showing here is the ability to interactively control TechPlot 360 uh, directly from a Python console. What we haven't shown you yet is uh, one of the really neat uh, capabilities of Python and our Python API is the ability to query information from TechPlot itself. Uh, so we'll, at this point, we'll hand it over to uh, Devin Simpson. She's going to be giving us a real-world example of how one of our users uh, is using PyTechPlot for data analysis. Thanks, Scott, for the great introduction to PyTechPlot Record and Connect. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you a challenge that a customer came to us where the customer was really interested in looking for uh, the average pressure, in this case total pressure, at a every single constant radius line from the hub to the shroud of their data set. In TechPot 360, you could do a lot of these. However, uh, these steps, however, it was not a super simple operation, especially the fact that he wanted to average all of the data points across each of these uh, constant radius lines. And uh, the result he was looking for was something uh, similar to the plot on the right, where he was plotting total pressure versus radius. Uh, and this is really the average of total pressure across the uh, full circumference of the simulation. Uh, doing this once was, a, was something that I was interested in, but being able to automate this in a consistent fashion and be able to interactively place this slice and get a, a query, the 3D simulation to get this 1D average was something that I was really intrigued to uh, get. So today, the demonstration that I'm going to go through today will be first to record uh, as many steps as possible using the building blocks that 360, uh, TechPlot 360 already has in record mode. And then I'm going to do some uh, quick editing of the script, and then uh, which will be able to run this and create the plot on the right. So now it's time to jump into TechPlot 360. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is start recording PyTechPlot. Uh, I'm going to save it as recorded. recorded. Um, this recording step is exactly the same as a regular 360 record, uh, macro recording. You get the same dialogues. You get the same control over uh, the interface as you would in other situations. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ensure that I've got a fresh slate by hitting new layout. Then I'm going to come in and load my PLP data. This was a, a data set that came out of CFX and then uh, loaded and uh, exported as PLP. So we're looking at something of constant uh, station between the uh, along the axis of rotation. So we're going to use uh, Z slices to generate this one 2D plane and place it somewhere up here. Can't see it quite yet, so I'm just going to hide these things and then redraw. Got the slice here now. Um, but we're also looking for those constant radius lines. To generate these constant radius lines, we're going to use the uh, a kind of a functionality that's kind of little known uh, in 360, uh, where we're going to, um, I realize I missed a step. I'm going to have to, before we do that, I'm going to extract my uh, slices. This is also another uh, important uh, another new feature with 2017 R3 is this Extract Slices dialog. You can see that we've added some capabilities so you can extract across multiple zones and extract into a 1D uh, ordered zone as well. So have a look at that in the new release. 
we're just going to use the same settings as uh, any 360 up until now did with active slice groups in the slice, uh, regular slice. So I, now I have this as a new uh, zone. I'm good to go. So back to the contour details dialog. I'm going to plot by radius and then make sure that I've set my radius to the full min-max. Uh, then I'm going to come in, turn off the slice, and ensure that I've got this extracted slice zone. And then I'm going to come into zone styles, turn on contour to lines for this data set. Then I'm going to turn on contour as a ma master switch and redraw. At this point, I've got my contour lines representing uh, the constant radius values that I'm going to extract and then average over in my Python script. Each of these are going to, when I come into data extract contour lines, are going to come into their own separate zone for each contour level. So I can show that in data set info, we've got a whole set of new zones representing each of the contour levels. Uh, so now we've got that. In, th in the Python script, we're going to loop over these and take the average, and then we're going to need to have a place for these average values to go into. So I'm going to continue these uh, few steps of creating a new frame, uh, and then also uh, creating a rectangular zone with, if you notice, I had 15 uh, radius points, so these are going to be the average values for a 1D line that I'm going to generate. And then over in this plot, I'm going to create an XY line plot from total pressure versus my radius variable for this generated 1D zone. And at this point, all of my uh, points are 0, 0 for the generated line. But this is where we're going to go over into Python and um, populate this line zone so that we can get the re desired resulting line plot. So I'm going to stop recording come over into Python and uh, open the file that I just recorded. So to start here, you can see a lot of different commands. It, as we went through, it recorded every step along the way. Some of the steps were recorded as an execute command. This is uh, actually executing a the native pipe or techplot macro commands. And these are just places where we either don't have a PyTechplot API as of yet, or they're uh, things that are have not been translated yet. But most of the style elements, uh, so slices, contour groups, uh, field map settings, have all been extract or has been translated into their relevant PyTechplot uh, APIs. I'll just expand on this point, Devin, just for a second, is uh, that our Python API is an evolving API. So uh, as we uh, make new releases, uh, these TP macro execute command uh, items that you see recorded will uh, be reduced. Uh, but it does also, uh, the macro.execute command does also allow people who are familiar with the macro language to get a nice quick start with Python. Thanks for that, Scott. Uh, so I'm going to, this is, uh, I'm going to go through and do that average of the radius contour lines as I was talking before. So this is going to be our, the location where we start the extraction of the contour. So. Uh, the first thing I want to do is loop over all of my contour variables. So the first thing I'm, to do this, I need to have my data set, which is going to be tp.activeframe.dataset. 
That's just a handle to the data set. You can see throughout we were using uh, things like active frame dot plot. Uh, that's the safest way for us to record it. However, for um, production scripts, it's a very good idea to get the handle to the plot in the data set so you can operate them on them separately and not query across the socket connections in connect mode uh, makes it, your script run a little bit slower. So now that I've got the handle of the data set, I'm going to get the number of zones before and after I create my uh, create my contour zones. So that's going to be just something along the lines of this data set dot uh, num zones. And then so this is what I did before and then after I'm going to get the final number of zones here. Uh, so now that I've got the indices of the before and after, I can just do use Python for loops to loop over all of the indices between the number of initial zones to the number of final zones. So this will loop through all of the contour groups that I can do. And then next I'm going to grab the final, um, ah, sorry. So now that I've got the index, I'm also going to want to grab the uh, zone by, uh, as the zone object. So that's going to be just by cur zone is going to be defined by the data set and then dot zone and then the index that I'm looping over. So this is the object to the uh, a zone object uh, representing the current zone of interest. Now that I have the zone of interest, I'm going to I'm looking for the radius and the uh, and the variable that I'm going to be averaging over. So that's going to be the values that I'm going to be averaging over are going to be the cur zone dot values. So this is the way that I can get the uh, actual elements in the variable that I'm interested in. And then I want to get this out as a numpy array so that I can use all of the capabilities of Python. And I can just do that by simply querying it as a numpy array. Because I'm going to be using numpy, I'm going to make sure that I uh, import numpy here. And yeah, so for those of you that aren't familiar with numpy, uh, numpy is a quite a powerful uh, package in Python that uh, has very good uh, utilities for array handling and uh, mathematical operations. Uh, so we're really happy to uh, be able to offer this capability. And as you can see, Devin here, you know, to average those values, a simple call to np.average. Yep. So that allows me to just get the sim really easily average the values of this contour zone. Uh, a few more things that I also need to get the radius of the current zone, so I'm going to get the current radius value by, again, querying the current zone values for the radius variable. And I'm going to just grab, because con it's going to be constant radius throughout, I'm just going to grab the first uh, uh, value in the list, and that should be sufficient uh, for my the value, each value on the thing, on the y-axis of the line plot. So now that I've kind of looped through, I need a, the best way to pass them into, uh, into the arrays is to be able to build up a Python list and then pass them back into the generated uh, zone as a unit. So I'm going to do that quickly here values of generating a simple list, and then this is also going to be the radius values. And then I'm going to use those 
tens value uh, the average uh, value, and then the same for radius. And radius. And this is going to go into rad value. So that generated a list that I can easily put into. I'm going to move this down. So we've got our create rectangular zone here. I'm going to move that up before I create the frame to make sure that I'm working on the same data set. Uh, and that needs to be untabbed. So after I've created my rectangular zone, I'm going to get the rectangular zone again as a zone object. So that's going to be my result zone is equal to data set dot uh, zone. And I can also access this by a reverse index and create rectangular zone, creates it as the last zone in the list. Uh, now I'm going to also do the same thing with result zone dot values. And this is where I'm going to pass the values back into uh, the radius that I generated in the final results values. Um, Total pressure. And to do that, I'm going to use just the Python, a familiar Python syntax of using colon and passing var values. And then doing the same thing for radius values here for r. So it's then going to create the new frame and uh, generate a line plot. Uh, and so let's see how this runs. So reminder, we have to, to run in connect mode, we're, we have to uncomment this line to uh, tell the script to run in connect mode versus batch mode. So. I've uncommented it. It's going to uh, then work in connect mode. I'm just going to bring 360 up here, do a new layout. So I start in the same condition that I started before, and allow PyTech plot connection. And fingers crossed, because this is a live demo, we'll hit play. Hopefully it works. So you can see connection established here going through the same exact steps as we did in 360, currently averaging all of these values, um, sending data across the connection is something we're still working on performance from. But here we've got our extracted line plot for the resulted zone. So if we wanted to go into a little bit more refined of a data set. As I was talking before, we want to, if possible, we want to be able to do this active frame dot plot and get a, a plot result. So this is kind of what a PyTech plot script would look like if we were to grab the access. And this is very highly recommended for better performance. Uh, finally, I was able to, uh, the, the customer in this case was very interested in uh, doing this in an interactive way. So being able to load any data set and uh, create uh, the same type of plots. He was, uh, so I generated this quick PyQt Py GUI where I can uh, say load data and then this will create the slider that, uh, that represents kind of the min-max of the Z position place a slice, and then set the slice location, do the same calculations as I had recorded, and then create the line plot. You can see that um, it created it there. I'm going to create another slice position, and then create another line. It's 
doing the data calculations, and there's the second line. So you can really quickly uh, use the record capabilities to get you off to a good start to create this uh, very custom workflows where you can inter, uh, integrate with data and 360, 360 capabilities, as well as all of the capabilities available in PyTechBlob and Python. So that's the sum of the demonstration. And now it's time to go into the, and follow on to questions. So. Yeah, thanks, Devin. I, I think that really illus illustrates uh, some of the power that uh, we uh, we hope that you'll be able to take advantage of with PyTechBlock, particularly the ability to query uh, query the data. That's that's where PyTechBlock really gets interesting uh, through the use of PyQt, which is a GUI development framework in Python. Uh, you can create custom user interfaces. Uh, you know, this is a uh, uh, an early uh, product for us, uh, and we're going to be continuing to improve it. So uh, you, you should see uh, improvements as, as we move along. So let's move on to uh, questions. Uh, so we'll start with some questions that were submitted uh, prior to the webinar. And feel free to use the question panel in uh, GoToWebinar uh, to ask questions, and, and we'll take those at this time, and we'll get through as many as we can. Uh, so. Uh, First question, John, I'll ask you, is there anything uh, that PyTech Plot can't do that a macro can? Well, the short answer is no. Uh, PyTech Plot can do anything that can be done via macro. <clears throat> and really, this is because we can call macro commands from PyTech Plot. Uh, but in addition to that, we also have a very nice object-oriented uh, interface that is the PyTechPlot API. And most of the features uh, of the TechPlot 360 engine, we'll call it, is available in the PyTechPlot API today. There are a few exceptions. And for those exceptions, you can always fall back to calling macro commands using this command here, techplot.macro.execute command. And it also means that, as you said earlier, we can mix Python code and macro commands in the same script. Uh, but there is one caveat there, that uh, the Python API, we've made a zero-based API. So all indices are uh, start with the number zero, whereas the macro commands all start with the number one. So you do have to keep that uh, clear when you're when you're mixing the two. Yeah, certainly. And you'll see that in recorded um, PyTechBlot scripts. You'll see when it falls back to the macro command, you'll see one based indexes. And then when you see it go to the PyTechBlot API, you'll see it, you know, zero-based indexes. So it's something to be aware of, uh, especially when recording. Right. But one of the key cap one of the key areas uh, for indices in uh, Python uh, and the macro language is zone and variable access. But a, a really nice capability in PyTechPlot is the ability to access zones and variables by name. So uh, in many of those cases, you don't even have to worry about the indices. Now we do record indices, but you can change those uh, after after you're done with the recording. Okay. Uh, can PyTechBlot be installed without admin privileges? I know that uh, we have a lot of users who are at uh, pretty locked down environments, and, and it can be hard to get this installed. You have to deal with IT, uh, and sometimes that IT is contracted. So how do I install that if I don't have admin rights? Yeah, sure. So PyTechBlot uh, can, is installed using the uh, Python standard package manager, which is called PIP. And PIP does have an option to install any package in the user's home directory. And this works on any platform, Windows, Linux, and Mac. And it, the command looks exactly like uh, at the bottom here, where we're calling uh, PIP. Now, PIP is a Python module. So if I want to know exactly which version of Python I'm installing my uh, you know, PyTechBot into, I would call it exactly like this. So Python-M PIP. So that's the, the PIP uh, main program, I'm telling it to install, and when this dash dash user, that option says, okay, well, I really want to install it into my home directory, not in some, uh, you know, system, you know, not in some central location, okay? And so, so yes, uh, the one caveat to that is you do need an installation of TechBot 360, and that is typically installed by a system administrator, although I guess it can be installed as a, a user, of course. To be something to be aware of. 
Okay, uh, and how do I get started with uh, PyTech Plot? Well, we, we showed a little bit of how to get started uh, today. Uh, John, any uh, additional comments here? Yeah, uh, so I guess I'll uh, start by referring to the online documentation. The URL is on the uh, page there. It's techplot.com slash docs slash PyTechPlot. And this documentation is uh, nearly complete on the PyTechPlot API side and actually has uh, several examples. And you'll see um, most of the objects that we have created that deal with plots or slices or you know, vector plots or uh, even data set zones and variables have associated with them complete examples. So you'll see it in the um, reference documentation, complete examples of how to use each of the classes that we have. And that uh, should be immensely useful, for, especially for getting started and understanding kind of the underlying concepts and um, the rationale of our object-oriented design of PyTechPlot. In addition to that, there are examples that are shipped with TechPlot 360 in under the uh, PyTechPlot directory. So in the installation of TechPlot, there's a PyTechPlot directory. That's where the PyTechPlot source is along with the directory called uh, examples. And in there, there's about 25 Python scripts that you should be able to run, uh, you know, just um, you know, as normally. And you know, it, uh, it imports uh, the PyTech plot module and does some operation. Usually it loads a data set that's, you know, that, that also comes with 360 and then does some operation and produces an image. So, so those are very helpful to, uh, to get started. Um, but really, the you know the, the first thing to look at would be the the front page of the documentation here, the, the installation steps, which are um, as complete as you know we could make it at the moment. So it's it's really a, it's, a, it's a nice resource. Okay. Okay. And uh, now we'll go ahead and take your questions. Uh, I I have one question so far. Uh, don't be shy. Uh, so the question is, is PyTechPlot available in TechPlot 360 2016? Uh, the answer is no. We first introduced this in the 2017 R1 release. Uh, so it does require that release of uh, TechPlot to get started. Uh, this recording and connections capability that we introduced today is going to be available in the 2017 R3 release, uh, which uh, will be made available next week. So we're putting the finishing touches on that release. Uh, right now, uh, you'll see uh, a, a number of other uh, capabilities, including the uh, ability to uh, use LaTeX syntax. Uh, we've added a new uh, data loader to load VTU files, which is one of the VTK uh, file formats, and uh, of course this capability. So uh, we hope that you'll get uh, a lot of utility out of that. And, and I'd like to point out that uh, although uh, the PyTech plot, uh, feed, you know. Um, you know, feature was available in 2017 R1 and R2, we have made uh, major improvements from one version to the next. And just this most recent version of 2017 R3 is going to come with significant performance improvements when dealing with PyTechPlot scripts. Uh, kind of our, our first wave was uh, you know, getting it working and making sure that it was correct. And now the second wave is really just kind of fine-tuning it and making it uh, very quick and um, you know production ready. Okay. Uh, next question uh, is: Today's presentation and source code going to be available afterwards? Uh, certainly, the presentation will. Uh, the source code, uh, you know, you can see it right there on on the screen. Uh, I suppose we could uh, consider releasing the source code uh, separate, uh, and uh, so I'll have to talk with my. Uh, my distribution team to see if we can make that available. But uh, certainly the presentation and uh, you can see the source code on the screen. Okay, a few more questions coming in here. Uh, let me read them here so I understand them. Uh, I can take them. Yeah. So sure. we have a question about um, asking about uh, this glob-like string matching uh, for zones and variables and also uh, data sets. This is correct, yeah. So every, or most every object, uh, including frames, uh, data sets, zones, variables, field maps, and line maps, have a name associated with them. 
And to access them, we can access it by name, as you've seen in the example. But we could also use a glob-like syntax, exactly. It's, uh, it's just like um, Linux's file matching. It's not a regular expression, so, but it's very similar. And so I could do something like, um, you know, uh, get the zones, uh, you know, that, that I'll start with X, so it would be X star, and I would get all the zones that start with X. So yes, that's uh, right. And and that and that API. So this is dataset dot zones or dataset dot variables. That's one of those APIs where uh, where we did find some performance issues, and we've made really big performance improvements with uh, with that pattern matching in the 2017 R3 release. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. Are there uh, examples of macro versus Pytech plot for some simpler case? Uh, well, we. We don't really have examples of macros versus Pytech plot, uh, but uh, if you have a specific case uh, that you'd like to see us work up, please uh, contact us. Uh, the, the guys in our support uh, department can uh, certainly help you get started. Uh, next question, uh, does the connection require a, a special port number, and what about admin privileges for connections? Okay, yeah, so you can set the port number in 360 and also in Pytech plot. So you can use any of the ports that are available, but it does have to be um, open. Let's say if you want to go from one computer to the next, okay, so you do the, the computer that's running 360 has to allow connections on that port number. So that's a firewall setting. Uh, but by default, we have uh, 360, this, um, the connections is only listening to the local host, which should be available on any port. So um, as long as you're on the same machine, you shouldn't have to worry about a firewall or admin privileges. Okay, it's only when you want to do remote connection to 360 where you would need to worry about a firewall. Uh, but certainly you can set the port on both sides and it can be anything. Okay. Uh, that uh, seems to do it for the questions. Oh, one more. Uh, is Pytech Plot able to work on uh, a Linux version? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, Pytech Plot works uh, on all the platforms that we support, which are Windows, uh, Linux, and Mac. So, and, and we're going to uh, continue to support those. We, do, uh, we have quite a, an extensive test lab here, and we make sure to test uh, across uh, the various operating systems on a, on a daily basis. So uh, we're really happy with our support there. Okay, well, thank you everybody for joining us today. I hope you found this informative. Uh, and uh, our support staff are always on hand to uh, be able to help you out. So contact us, support at techplot.com. Uh, we really pride, us, pride ourselves on uh, good support. We hope you'll find uh, the 2017 R3 release helpful. And you can always look at uh, this webinar or other webinars on our website.